I wonder if he would have bet if he had missed, but uh, he hit the top pair and he decided, well, if I'm behind, I'm going to go out and I'm going to try and make the most of this. Well played, Tony. Next case. Look at him staring down Jan. Look at the body language between the pair of them. Jan, this time with the pair of jacks. Well, he said 22,000. Well, has Thomas got enough chips just to call this never look, or is he... Look at it, he's wearing his heart on his sleeve once again. He, does, he wanted to play this hand, but he doesn't want to go out. If he moves in, he'll be in big, big bother. You put nothing in this pot, mate, you can throw it away. No. <clears throat> and that's what he's done. And back round to the two chief protagonists again. Tony would, really did want to play this <laughs> Queen Jack suited. It's a pretty, pretty hand. First nicking rights on the flop. He's already got the big blind in. I think he might be tempted to have a look. Carl? No more than a look at the moment. Yeah, and about a two to one favourite here. Tony Bloom needing to hit a queen. And he's hit just what he needed. And that's very dangerous for Yan because Yan will like this flop. He knows unless Tony has got a queen, he's in front. Yan has to really bet this. And I think Tony might come over the top again. If he does. And the last time there was a trap check from Tony Bloom. Well, Yan didn't buy it. Very sophisticated play by Jan Savage not to bet that flop. Maybe he still thinks he's in front and he'd rather have Tony bluff at it than have Tony come over the top of him when he bets. Hard for Jan to put this down. 7,000. Tony is committing such a large part of his stack. 37,000 bet there. Jan must consider it would be a tough situation for Tony to bluff. But yes. Jan, he's fallen for it. He's fallen for Tony's check on the flop. Jan thought he was setting a trap by checking behind him. 68,000. Tony didn't come here to pass in this kind of situation. He knows he can double himself up and get himself right back in the game. It's tricky though because Tony re realizes that Yan thinks he's in front. And if Yan thinks he's in front, he could have a bigger pair than Queens. But neither of them, they both played slow on the flop, so neither of them really knew what the other one had. And now Yan, the more Tony thinks, the more Yan thinks he's, he may actually be winning with his chance. But he'd love Tony to pass, of course. I don't think Tony will pass Jim. Too many chips in the pot. He's a gambler by nature as well, isn't he, Tony? There we go. All in for Tony Bloom. Tony Bloom is all in. Board is seven, queen, three, five, playing against Jan. 65 for a change. <clears throat> One jack in the pack. To send Tony packing, okay. otherwise he's going to double up please. and he's going to be a big danger in this game again. For Jan and Queen check for Tony. Tony has yeah. a pair of queens. It's going to be difficult. Guys, saying this is an absolutely Only shocking hand for one of them. Card. And the last card is an eight. And, and it's Jan. Pair up. of queens for Tony, and he's brilliantly played himself back into the chip lead on this table. Jan. Left to sit and contemplate. I think Tony is back in now. Back on table one, a situation that didn't seem possible about an hour ago. John Cabage in real trouble. And Rolf has been the main beneficiary. He and Ben both in a very healthy position now. Yes, you've got to win the even shots in this game. John lost that huge pot with the ace king suited against the Jacks. And he knows he's got to move very, very soon. And here we go. And John is going all in. Oh, John, John, John. Timing is everything in this game. And Rolf 
Got the perfect Fifty hand thousand. to take John on with. Cool. What cool. tent it's Oh dear. He had to think about that a little bit, did he? John Kabaj is all in. Playing against the Rolf. So John's all in. Well, he's way behind, but he's due a bit of luck, John. He would chip leader on this table before losing that even shot. Playing against a pair of kings from Rolf. Well, it does look as if we're going to be down to three finalists on this table. And the flop is. John needs a lot of help. Well, Eight, ten. chances. He can needs. make a straight here. A nine or a king. Let's see the turn card. Except for the king that he really didn't want to see before. He's another ace. Can't hit a king Just a nine now, now to save the John. Card is a seven. No help for John. And John is out. He reached the final table last year, but no repeat. One bad hand, then some bad luck. John Cabbage is out. Well, ben ending. Roberts, Rolfing Ivanvik, and Bagill through to the final. John Cabbage, one of the stars of the final last year, so nearly in it again this year, but John, you just didn't get the breaks. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was going on for a while, and um, there was no big hands coming out. Every time I had a big hand, I was just winning the blinds, and. Uh, Finally, a typical you know, no-limit hold'em situation came along with a, an ace-king against two jacks. And uh, If I didn't have the chips left, I would have passed the hand. Mm. But at this stage, uh, I can call, win the hand, and now I'm going to be a good favourite for the final. Right. Um, and it, was, it was strange because so, you know, generally in these situations, I would just say automatically call with my ace-king. But it's like I knew, you know, I knew he, he didn't have ace queen or ace jack, which is what you want him to have. You thought you could read him pretty accurately. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was pretty obvious what he had, you know. And I was just hoping it was a bit of guesswork that he hasn't got aces or kings. What made you so confident you could read his hands? Because um, he just wasn't playing any hands, and uh, he never protected his big blind. Every time someone raised his big blind, he never protected it. He always, right. you know, he's basically only going to do something if he's got a hand. So when a player, you know, when I, now wants to re-raise you. Uh, it's not difficult to work out that they've actually got a hand mm. and they've actually got a pretty good hand. Mm. Um, I mean, he actually thought about, you know, you could see he was thinking, he nearly passed the two jacks probably, you know, he was, he, it was going through his mind. Uh, but I just knew that if I can hit for once, then I'm going to be in good shape for the final. Because right. you know, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to play to win. You know, getting the stage, you know, getting knocked out and getting to the final, whatever, is, is good, but you still got to play to win. Right. There's no point going to the final and being last in chips. That's not my style, never has been, and that's how I play. I play to win. My commiserations, John, but good to hear from you as ever.